Sir, our view is the leaving cert should go. Uh, it's outlived its usefulness, uh, and that it, it's a gatekeeping exercise and a streaming exercise, uh, which perpetuates inequalities uh, and limits, or streams at least, access to third level uh, education. Um, now, I know you mightn't agree with all of that, uh, but I think um, you have committed to some sort of review of the Leaving Cert, and I want to know where that is at, because I think particularly after COVID, uh, a root and branch review is long overdue. Okay, and uh, I appreciate the, the question and I do appreciate the sincerity with which it is put as well. Um, you may be aware that between 2016 and 2020, the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment undertook an extensive uh, review of senior cycle programmes and vocational pathways. The NCA's advisory report on the senior cycle has been submitted to the department for consideration and will be published once that consideration is complete. I am aware of the desire in the education community and more generally for that to happen, but we must complete our consideration of the report. I'm focusing on what the implementation of the report will involve and what we can do to best ensure the further evaluation and future, I suppose, evolution um, of senior cycle. As the consideration of the advisory report has, contained, um, has continued, uh, my officials have had contacts with uh, the NCCA, the SEC, to ensure there is a clarity of understanding on some matters identified in the report. I've had a considerable number of briefing sessions and meetings with relevant officials in the department as our consideration of the NCCA advisory report has continued. In addition, I recently attended the NCA Council meeting um, to acknowledge their work and to, um, to express a sincere thank you for it. I also opened the recent Joint Managerial Body Conference, uh, the theme which was, of course, Senior Cycle uh, for All. In respect of the advisory report, the review considered a number of areas, including the question of the overall purpose of senior cycle education, as you would have referenced, how to establish continuity and progression, and the pathways available to students. The review involved a broad range of research, consultations and communications with a broad range of stakeholders, including very importantly students themselves, on all aspects of review and redevelopment. The NCCA also commissioned external expertise, which I do believe is also important, to support the process, including the ESRI and the OECD. Thank you. you know, uh, I remember at a lecturer in UCD who told me, I don't know if it's absolutely true, but I think it's, it's, it's certainly a fact that the, much of the modern exam system originated with uh, efforts to populate the civil service in British-controlled China, colonial China. Uh, so it, it's a structure which is about enforcing certain norms and certain notions of hierarchy. Uh, and I think that is still true of the leaving uh, cert. I mean, you know, there's some dinosaurs in, in, in the north uh, or in Britain who might hark back to the days of the 11 plus when you sort of, through exams, streamed people's access to secondary education, right? We'd now think that's hor horrible, right? I, to my mind, the time has come for us to have the same attitude towards access to third level education. And I just don't see how the Leaving Cert is anything other than a gatekeeping exercise, a streaming exercise, an unnecessary stress uh, which does nothing really to, uh, to encourage education uh, and, and has long outlived its usefulness. Thank you, and thank you, Deputy. Um, I, I do appreciate the point you make that perhaps more than ever, um, COVID has even focused our lens even more closely on how the Leaving Certificate and Senior Cycle um, operates. And to be fair, the entire review um, involves all of senior cycles. So we're talking about uh, leaving certificate applied. We're talking about the leaving certificate established, as we would know it. We're talking about the LCVP program, and we're also uh, re referring to the transition year program as well. Because I, I, I do agree that when we're looking at senior cycle, we need to look at it in, in, in its whole. Um, I, I want to acknowledge that um, within the report there has been a, an opportunity to look at, um, I suppose, what currently what we have, what works well, but also to um, to go beyond that and to look at, I suppose, really the absolute, which I believe is the key question, is that there is a pathway for all within education, that every child's needs are met within the education system and the opportunity for everybody to progress at whatever level or 
whatever opportunity or pathway they might wish to follow. I'm particularly pleased that the review uh, has consulted widely and that students have been at the centre of it and indeed that there is outside expertise as well. There is an urgency attached to moving ahead with senior cycle reform and I, can, I want to confirm to you, Deputy, that I'm conscious of that and cognizant of it. Maybe you could tell us when, when that report, can you be more specific about when the report will be published and when this is going to happen? Because I don't think this can be long fingered. As you said, COVID has really highlighted the inadequacies. I mean, it highlighted inadequacies that were there before, but it shone them a very sharp light uh, on the problems, uh, the unfairnesses and so on of uh, the Leaving Cert. And to be honest, it's just unfair to put huge numbers of students through the unnecessary, incredible stress that it imposes on many students. Uh, and how that's unfair, it's actually damaging for many, many uh, pupils for their intellectual development and confidence. Uh, so as long as it's there when it's outdated and we recognise that it has gone past its state of usefulness, I think it is actually damaging. So there's a certain urgency in the root and branch review that is necessary and removing any barriers or hierarchies in terms of accessing the next level of education. Amazing deputy, and I, I do also appreciate the, the urgency with which uh, you view the question. I want to acknowledge that um, the, the, the report uh, or review has been submitted with four years in the making. There's a considerable body of work in it, the widest possible element of consultation, rightly. With, with all of the partners in education, uh, parents, teachers, um, wider society, students obviously as well, and as I've said already, you know, expert um, view and experience from, from other jurisdictions as well. Um, therefore, it, it does demand a, a level of consideration that is important, uh, and as I've previously outlined to you, it has involved engagement with the NCCA further uh, in, in terms of points of clarification, or it has also involved you know, work with the SEC, um, but there, I, I do appreciate the urgency that's attached to it. I want to assure you that um, it, it, in, the, in the shortest time frame possible, uh, that report will be published, and it will, uh, I have confidence, set a pathway forward. Thank you. Minister, our education system is a crisis point and many schools are struggling to stay afloat. School leaders are working up till midnight every night trying to source subs for their schools for the next day. Many of these positions remained unfilled, many classes end up with no teacher to take them and according to the INTO survey nearly a third of substitutable days were not covered. Will the Minister accept that there is a substitution crisis in our schools? And Minister, referring to my previous question, are you saying that we don't need school specific contact tracing? Who will do the contact tracing if you say there is no way that teachers or principals Thank will you. have to do it? Thank you, Deputy Minister. Thank you, uh, um, I would be the first to acknowledge um, that these are difficult and challenging times, not just presently but indeed throughout the pandemic, for all school leaders, for all school communities. And there has been an extraordinary generosity um, by school leaders and school communities to, um, to do what needs to be done in terms of delivery of education and indeed to pivot in other directions when it was not possible to uh, maintain that delivery within the, the school setting and to provide remote teaching and learning. Um, certainly um, there are challenges, challenges continuing within the education sector, particularly uh, you've referenced in, in terms of um, substitution and I want to acknowledge that there has been extraordinary cooperation between the partners in education and, and others in terms of uh, finding a pathway forward. It is more acute in some areas than others and it is a considerable challenge. Um, there have been uh, significant um, I suppose, measures put in place over the last number of weeks and again this week, uh, this evening. Uh, so, for example, uh, following positive engagement with the HEIs over the last number of, of, of weeks and including today, um, we're now in a position to say that the, um, there will be an opportunity for the HEIs to facilitate release of PME and BED year three and four students to support schools up to the end of term. The HEIs have also agreed to explore flexible options in relation to the assessment requirements for programmes in the context of students being available to support schools also, which I think is an important consideration. Retired teachers returning to the classrooms until the end of the current term will not have their pensions impacted. Um, qualified teachers on secondment to the department's um, teacher education support services um, um, uh, 
will, will now be released and made available to the schools. Um, the uh, CPD programmes, which are um, being followed at primary school, all CPD where substitution is required, um, will be deferred until uh, the February midterm break. And it is intended that this CPD will be rescheduled, obviously, following the midterm break. Um, in terms of supply channel, uh, panels, there will be additionality also added to the supply channel uh, panels, 100 added in the last week or so, a further 200 bringing us now to 680 teachers on a full-time basis available, and there are also other measures.